During a weekend flooded with an overwhelming amount of releases that I already want to talk about, there's a point where gathering all your thoughts needs a bit of time beforehand, especially in cases where I might want to flesh out the one sentence I have about the album from Billie Eilish, or simmer down the 500 that I have to say about Quelle Chris. There's a lot of times where I'd like to step away from anticipated releases, to let my thoughts on them dwell and incubate, and what better way to take a breather than to hear very wholesome, pure soundscapes that feel like reflections of family, upbringing and environment. Meite is a composer and musician from Japan, who seeks to revive the soul of the country that still sleeps in the darkness, a sentence that sticks with me as I weave through the 12 gorgeous and cleaning vignettes that make up Komachi. Dedicated to his late grandmother, the album strikes you with a delicate and heartfelt warmth, and often seems to reflect the liquid solace that water is by actually sampling recordings of it trickling and streaming, so this album will either soothe you on morning walks, or make you want to take a piss during a morning walk. My nose is so cold tonight. Can't stop touching it. Komachi may not be an album with a progression, with many tracks that function more as playing around with a watery, serene sound palette that you may even have gotten used to hearing the extents of at that point in the album, but it's still one that finds its space in the world and time and stays there to meditate and find peace. And for that reason, it's a very likeable experience. In many respects, it is very much like Shai's album Wool Gatherer's Pond that I found similar familial solace in, except Komachi sounds less like a reminiscent on the adolescent wonder experienced in the past, and more like it is reaching for something that we've brushed over and underestimated in the present. The complex layering of sound to evoke a particular reaction of relief, and yet still being jumbled enough to remind you distantly of the bustling, overwhelming life that you're finding solace from, makes this a little more than the kind of release that just tries to leave you a bunch of neat ambient sounds and doesn't do anything with them to make an impactful composition, or even a composition at all. Tracks don't cleanly transition, they seem to puddle splash from segment to segment. Some of said segments have their own mini segments that repeat over and over like time loops. Kawanabe Kiyosai Part 1 stutters with spaces of silence towards the end to disjoint the flow a little bit, just rearranging those ideas on each track, which works to both its benefit and its detriment. It's not a 10 for 10 perfect album, but I don't really need it to be. If you wanted to really press me for a rating that seesawed the highlights versus the drawbacks, it'd probably be a 6 out of 10 that touches 7 during several moments. Otherwise, that doesn't matter, because it's a special album in the context of this year nevertheless. It's a cleansing and even natural sounding moment that feels like an escape from the busyness we're surrounded with, and it hopes for us to sail away for a spare moment. Maybe let this accompany you when you need something to hear to clear away that stressful fog. You probably do, to be fair.